Man, welcome to one more broadcast of the Institute Life for All, which is in the scope of the International Conference of February 2021. The week of the conference com- finished already and concluded last weekend, and we have four more weekends to conclude the 24 messages we'll, we, that will compose the daily food, the series, which is the church, the the pillar and ground of the truth, pillar and base of the truth. Thank the Lord that we're able to broadcast this message in the auditorium of the church in Sao Paulo. Today's message will be the age of the seven spirits, which is Revelation 1 verses 4 to 6. Thank the Lord. The spirit is wonderful. It does its work. And today we are under its management. It knows what to do. It is omnipotent, omniscient, and it is able to do things that man is unable to do. That's why this this Friday, our beloved brother Ezra Ma, he shared a message that was very very and we gained much light from it and i will just mention the following that what he spoke we are we are merely merely a bush we are who harm people basically those who draw closer to us those who are most intimately, we tend to bite them a little bit. But thank the Lord, He chose us to be in a holy place. And in this holy place, that that bush that is a thorn bush is able to sustain the Holy Spirit of God. So therefore, the holy fire of God, that, that's why we have to thank the Lord. We who were completely useful, useless. We were only used to our sole purpose was to harm others. But thank the Lord, we, the Spirit is itself is sustaining us, and that holy fire of God is burning inside us. And this same Spirit is operating in His church, and the end result will be that this thorn bush will become a pillar, will become a ground, a base to sustain truth because God is truth and he is infusing his reality in his church and we are receiving it through the word that he dispenses to us. More and more of this reality of God is being constituted, is being consolidating in us. So may the Lord bless each and every one of us who follow the prophetic word. The Lord will truly, the Lord still has much to say because he wants to lead us until his return. Beloved saints, I am full of joy for this special moment. We live in a moment that's very, very special. I personally I admire the apostles who the Lord chose in the first century, the 12 apostles. Apostle Peter would lead them with John, and they had an amazing beginning, bold beginning, and the Lord miraculously raised up Apostle Paul, being a persecutor of the church, became someone who received Someone who was a vessel chosen by God who received all wonderful revelation of the mysteries of God and dispensed them to us. 
and I admire this person, you know, Paul, who practically is is the greater part of, of the economy of God of the whole New Testament is revealed through this channel. Because after we see that it ends with the ministry of John, I will comment uh, it a little bit in this message. But they did not have the opportunity to to uh, to to see this moment of dawn, like us, many servants of God, who lived centuries ago, great men of of faith, of word, but also were unable to be in this moment, the workers of the zero time, third time, six time, nine time, did not have the chance to experience, to experience this moment like we are experiencing. So saints feel privileged, feel privileged. If we live in this time, we are, we are being, we are, seeing and being presencing we're experiencing something that is impossible to do for man so for example yesterday we had we had the godspeed young people event they had fire the spirit of god is a fire and this fire is burning. There is no way, there isn't a way for us to contain this fire, this flame. So, for example, yesterday there were more than 1,100 points of connection on YouTube. Just, just for example, young people in Sao Paulo here, I believe there are 99 young people here. And that is just one point of connection. There are other connection points that were behind these 99 young people, for example. So, of course, there are adult saints and older saints who are at home listening. That's why we have, we had about 100,000 points. But we calculated just young people. Around 7,000 young people participated in the Godspeed young people yesterday. Amen. It's truly a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a moment where the pressure of the world is so strong. It was for all of our young people to also be suffocated with this pressure, with the ministry of lawlessness, ideologies, so many lies being scattered and tearing down truth, trying to tear down this truth, deconstructing any base, any ground that there was in society because there was some, there was a bit of a base from, from the law of God, but not all collapse to this ministry of lawlessness but the church in the contrary miraculously is calling convocating and raising up many young people and play instead of them being apathetic like everyone else and loving the world they're raising up to be on God's side to bring the kingdom of God back Saints, this is something that is unthought of, unthought of a, a few years ago. So that to us is a dawn, is a miracle of the dawn. Cole porters are doing miracles among, you know, many contacts with people and masks and, and social distancing. We're distributing daily around eight to 10,000 books a day. And that's only because of the restrictions that we have in terms of coronavirus. So it's it's a miracle. Just just dynamic hope orders. It'd be over two million books being distributed. Yes, because they're the churches as well who are distributing, but 
I'd like to say that we're in a very special moment where the spirit is doing something that is very, very special. So it's not only that, but the networks of contact, networks of care, the Expo Livro, two of them are, are being are stopped because of the pandemic, but one of them is functioning. The GTC is functioning. The Book Cafe, the publishing house is publishing literature, supplying literature to the Cole Porters. Saints, we're functioning at full, full speed. The Lord is doing a miracle. The Spirit is doing a miracle among us. So I'd like to highlight certain points, but for you to understand that this is a special moment. So before anything else, I wanted to bring to you this definition of the dawn. You know that the dawn means the transition from night to day. The transition from night to day is when the first sun rays of light announce the, the beginning of a new day. So that is a definition of the dawn. But there's a scientific definition, which there's from a different angle, there's a more ge geometric definition. So the dawn is the unique moment. The dawn is the unique moment. We are experiencing a unique moment. You know what that unique moment is? The moment that you stop paying attention to it, it went by. So it is a unique moment where all of us, we must look at with much attention and react to this word. So it's the unique moment defined by the angle of solar elevation, which is the position of the sun in regards to the horizon. So I asked to project a graph just for you to understand better. I'm a man of graphs, so I, I like to explain it through that, through a graph. So this the, here is the line of the horizon. What is this line of the horizon? It's where you are. For example, the plane of this plane here is the horizon. If you're in this plane, horizontal plane, is that surface, is that line? Okay? Just that if you look here, and if the sun is under that, then it's complete darkness there. It's night. Night. But when the Lord reaches this point of 18 degrees of inclination in re to regards of the horizon, we would have the astronomical dawn. What is this astronomical dawn? It's when the geometric center of the disk of the sun means that the sun has a disk and the center geometrical center is the center of it. So the geometrical center of the disk of the sun, if you draw a line, let's say this is the line that, that links to the geometric center of the sun. Here, if it's 18 degrees, the astronomers would be able to, with a telescope, discover, whoa, the sun is drawing to this to this moment of astronomical dawn. Why? Because they observe through telescopes that some stars start to lose their shine. Some galaxies lose their shine. So they're able to observe that first. In second place, we have the navigation line so if if so this these would be 12 degrees of the horizon what would happen the nautical 
dawn, it would the the light would be able to reflect through the atmosphere. It's already generally sufficient to distinguish the heavens from the earth. So if if they're navigating in the sea and they could di differentiate the sea with the heavens. So when it reaches 12 degrees, in a practical standpoint, navigators, those who are commanding it, are able to distinguish the horizon where is the, where the heavens end, where the sun ends, where is the earth. So that is the nautical dawn. So if you go, if the sun goes up even higher, reaches this point, six degrees, it becomes the civil dawn, which is at six degrees under the horizon, which is where the sun is completely being involved with an orangey, yellowish color. So only planets like Venus and Jupiter are being able to visit this. So the civil aurora is being perceived already. So it's three levels of the dawn. So when you reach, when the sun reaches the surface horizon level, it's already dawn. What, what do I want to go at here? What I want to say is that if the sun reaches this point of the dawn already, it's already too late for us. If you desire to receive the coming of the Lord secretly, it's not at dawn. At dawn, the Lord will appear publicly for everyone to judge. Judgment seat. I don't want him to, I don't want to find out when he comes here. Probably. Look, look. Here, the prophets of God are speaking, maybe, that the dawn is near here. The specialists, those who have a telescope, can analyze it, and the spirit will lead, and we'll say, oh, we'll say, oh we're here, we're at 18 degrees. But saints, we need to prepare ourselves, you know, for what moment? For his secret coming, I believe, I believe that the Lord's secret coming will be at the nautical dawn. When in practice, you're able to distinguish the heavens from the earth. Light starts to have that distinction. So the vast majority in this section, no one is able to perceive it, but... The sea navigator is able to perceive it. So we could receive the Lord in this nautical dawn. Two will be in the field. One will be taken. The other one will be left. Two will be working. And one will be taken. The other one will be left. So in that moment. So we only have this difference here of six degrees. For us to prepare ourselves. And in this moment. That's where the miracle of the dawn operates. The spirit starts operating. So don't forget. Don't wait until the world comes to find out. Here probably. It will be peace and assurance. And a great, the great agreement will be done. And the seven days... Seven years will begin, and in the midst of it, there will be the great tribulation. So I don't want to be here when that happens. The second three and a half years. Let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 5. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 1. 
But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. At Paul's time, there, was, there wasn't a dawn, but in our time it's happening. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. So the day of the Lord, as I graph, it would be that he comes at night. Only the astronomers are able to distinguish it, then the navigators distinguish it. You're all sons of light. Oh. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. So that is the difference between the civil dawn and the actual dawn. So we are not of the night. We are of the day. But you, saints, amen, brethren, are not in darkness. We're not in darkness. Verse 4. So that this day should overtake you as a thief. Wow. We are not of darkness. Who is of darkness? That day will catch them by surprise. But, but for which you are all sons of light. Verse 5. And sons of the day. We are not of the night. Nor of darkness. Saints, we do not belong in darkness at night. We are living in a dark night. Since the Lord left, the time of the church lived under a time of darkness, which, which the church, which church became the moon. So it only reflects the sun and it only comes up at night. So the church is in a dark hour, shining as a moon. But we need to understand, saints, that we are not like the people of the world. You have contact with many people in the world, many of them. They become drunk and they're sleeping because they're of night. But we are not of night. Sometimes there are ideologies trying to influence our young people, especially from university. So you need to understand that you're not like the rest. You are not of the darkness, of the night. They are of the night, but you are not. You are of the day. Amen. Therefore, saints, being of the day, you ex wait for the day. You expect the day, right? Or are you having pleasures at night? There are people who like the night. There are people who have pleasure at night and parties and things being done in darkness but we are not of the night we are of the day not of darkness verse 6 therefore let us not sleep as others do but let us watch and be sober we don't sleep like the rest 7 for those who sleep sleep at night And for those who get drunk, are drunk at night. Saints, at night, you sleep, you relax, you forget of the day. No, no. Those who get drunk, and they get drunk at night with the pleasure of the world, with the joy of the world. No, we do not belong to the night, especially you young people. Listen to what I'm saying. You don't belong to the night. You are of the day. Amen. Eight, verse seven. Eight, but let us, who are of the day, be sober. So this is the moment to change our status. If I lived, you know, without many interests with the Lord, With his return, is coming, but now, thank God, the dawn is operating a miracle through the spirit that is a consuming fire, is burning. He's burning in our hearts of many people, especially our young people. So 
So changing a status means what? To a state of being vigilant. Let's be vigilant. Let us be sober. Do you want to be an overcomer? You need to be vigilant. You need to be sober. You can be taken. Taken by the by the tide. No. We are living fish who are swimming against the current. Amen. Not tied the current. So we need to change status. Those we're going to say, for example, okay, since you spoke on December 6, 2020, we change state, waiting for the Lord to return. And he returns and he says that we will be found in that state, we'll be overcomers. But if the Lord delays too, too long, how long will it be in that state? And I told them all, oh, you have to be there all the time. <laughs> Lord Jesus. If the Lord delays five more years, then stay five years in, in that status. The status of, of being vigilant and soberness. I believe that after five years living under that status, your stage will rise up, will level up. You had not reached the first level of status of the stage, let's say 30%. But if you remain five years in this status, you'll probably reach a 60, 70, 80% of a, a, a stage of maturity. So saints, it's worth it. Amen. Let us be vigilant and be sober. Amen. We who are the day, let us be sober putting on the breastplate of faith. That's verse 8. And love and, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Here Paul talks about the structure of the Christian life, the structure of the Christian life. Hey, faith, hope, and love. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Saints, here, the wrath and salvation refers to the reward. It is not the eternal salvation because Paul is speaking this to the believers, not to the unbelievers. So the wrath, the wrath for a believer means going to what? To the outer darkness throughout the millennial kingdom. Throughout the millennial, because there are things that we still have to be, be dealt with. Salvation here belongs to receiving the reward. Who died for us, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Meaning that Paul doesn't say for you to be alive. For Paul, you're alive is being in the state of vigilant. Here it doesn't say who is living alive and relaxed. No, you have to be vigilant and we need to sleep and live in union with him. Amen. Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. That is the status that we need to live in. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you are also doing amen i need to continue otherwise we won't have time to conclude then we have matthew 20 which are the workers of the last hour Because the kingdom of heavens is like an owner of a house to his vineyard, Matthew 24, that the oldest, remember that the oldest servant of the house, which is Abraham, who typified God as a prefigure, the father, he managed 
all of Abraham's wealth and his goods. He who manages God's wealth and assets, God Father, he comes to work in the day, starting the day of Pentecost, when in the end of Luke and Acts chapter 1, it is said for the next 120 Galileans to wait in Jerusalem so that the Father may send a promise. And that promise is the promise of the Spirit. So when the Lord Jesus died and resurrected and he was exalted to the right hand of God, their God sent the oldest servant of the house, which is the Holy Spirit, to descend. He inaugurated, debuted that action officially in the day of Pentecost. And the church of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem was generated, which typi typifies the church being generated, the Jews receiving baptism through the Holy Spirit that day, and the Gentiles who believed in the house of Cornelius and Acts. So all of these men who believed in Jesus would be received into the Holy Spirit and will be baptized by the Spirit and be completely involved by the Spirit. So today is the Spirit who is acting. The Spirit is who manages the house of God. So the Spirit is calling those who are unoccupied to work on the vineyard. The work of God is a vineyard. It's not a blah, blah, blah theologies. The house of God is a vineyard who God wants this vineyard to produce fruit to him. So we are here not just to study theology. No, we're here, saints, to, in fact, produce fruit for a Godfather. So the, there was a zero hour then three hours, six hour, and nine hour workers. And then in the last hour, it wasn't God, it wasn't for God to call any more people. The last hour was the ninth hour. But there exists the an, workers, laborers of an uh, hour who are, who are differentiated. We are these workers of the last hour. Why? Because in this last hour, is when the dawn happens. Are you understanding? We are the workers of the last hour because during our labor, the dawn appears. And when the dawn appears, a miracle happens. Many who should have been apathetic to the word are suddenly awakened by the word, by the prophetic word. That's why Psalm 110 verses 1 to 3, when it reaches verse 3, it says, Your people, regarding, is the Father talking to the Son, saying that your people will show, present themselves voluntarily, right? And the day of your calling. Some other version says, in the day of your warfare. Truly God, Jesus will battle one last fight to finish this usurp. This, this, this from Satan and from the government, government of the world who oppose God. So God is operating today in the church. But when it reaches a time of the dawn, a moment of the workers of the last hour, something happens which makes people present themselves generously and voluntarily. I believe that you're one of them, right? I think all of us feel something by the prophetic word. There's something that's burning inside us. It's burning inside me. I don't know if it's burning inside you, but it, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm getting crazy. I'm crazy here. Every time I speak, I, 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 I'm, I, I feel that it's the miracle of the dawn. And not only this, but the holy mountains is Zion, is a celestial Zion, heavenly Zion. 
is as they're acting as the drops of the of the dawn of the dew it says that you will have your army of young people or young holy ones so saints suddenly we don't know where these young people comes from and suddenly boom they start to be awakened by the lord i heard some testimonies from nine or seven young kids right who saw who were freed I, I i almost cried i said lord jesus those girls who were sharing not too long ago were not understanding anything from the things of god and suddenly the words that they're speaking they're words of people of great people i said oh lord wow look how much they matured in a short time so i'm truly glad that we are in a moment of the dawn and when this moment arrives miracles happen so i'll tell you that there will be more and more of these to occur so let us keep our status of being vigilant I'll have to review Luke 12. Let's go to Luke 12. You remember this? And you can perceive that all of this that I cited is related to the Lord's return. Luke 12, I want to point out here, verse 32, where it says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father, Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Wow. God chose a small flock. The small flock is inside the totality of the church. The church has many members, but not all of them are awakened. Not all of them are being vigilant and being sober. So thank God. Thank God that he has a small flock and this small flock will inherit the kingdom. The small flock, the Lord will give them the kingdom. Do you want to be part of it? That's why it's important to not be anxious by the things of the world. Do not be anxious. Don't be anxious for what you will eat and drink. You need to depend on the Lord. And you know that you will not lack food on your table. And also keep your treasure in heaven, not on things of this earth. And immediately he starts talking in verse 35 and 36. He says that he who composes, who are these men who compose a small flock? It is these who wait for their Lord. When Paul, he was, uh, he was going to be with the Lord. He says that his crown was already reserved. A righteous crown was reserved, not only to him, but to all those who love his return. Saints, loving his return, wait his, is to wait for his return, is, is, is waiting for the Lord to arrive. He is a son of righteousness. So we wait for the Lord's coming. We wait for it so much that when he knocks on the door, we're the first ones to open. So that's what I mean. So when he comes, may he find us doing so, meaning to be vigilant in a state of vigilance. An elevated status, we will be overcomers. And not only this, but we will be feeding the servants who God trusted us meaning that we are a small flock we have little strength but the lord sent us to preach the gospel we must go out to preach the gospel and god will do the rest the holy spirit does the rest it's so many it's so few of us we're we're a very insignificant number but thank god saints we are influencing society through can i pray for you through dynamic hole porting, through the church life, 
saying the church life is being completely differentiated. People who are watching us through the Institute Life for All on YouTube and other channels want to live the church life that you live. What is your church? I want to meet with you. This is a word that comes from the Spirit. This is something completely according to the truth, which supplies life and burns in our hearts. We want to know where the church is, where so many who were looking for a, for a church, they came. So this week, two Chinese couples came to seek me. I asked Andre Oliveira, is he here? Andre Oliveira, I, I asked him to shepherd me. I mean, to help me shepherd them. They even went to the Estancia. He, he asked, how can God bless you so much? What is the secret? They brought a book, a notebook to take notes of success of our work, of the church. I told them, there is no tips. The only tip, I told them, the only tip is that all of this that happened among us is the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Spirit. And regarding us, we only follow the Spirit. But how? It's through the Word, the prophetic Word. And by the fact that we are under the correct ground, the prophetic Word is coming. And the prophetic Word is a candle that shines and gives us a direction. You have to follow the direction. It is not us who are capable. I know that maybe maybe 70s, 80s, and 90s, maybe, we thought with Brother Dong had a co-worker who had very capable co-workers. No, we are incapable. Who's capable is the Holy Spirit. So there's only one secret, is the prophetic word. God speaks, and we practice, and we are simple, and we obey and the word does the work. Wow. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you understood this. But but that is the reality. Amen. The spirit truly does the work. And the small flock is the is it's by the spirit that does things. Let's go to the Church of Philadelphia, chapter 3. I'm mentioning these items. To show you that all these items are related to the Lord's coming, the Lord's return. So Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. And the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens, no one shuts and shuts, and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. We love the word of the Lord. We love the fundamental word of the Bible and the prophetic word that give us direction of the Lord, and we do not deny the name of the Lord at all times from our mouths. It's always the calling of the name of the Lord because without calling, without us calling, we don't live. We need God. We need the Lord, and we do not deny this name. This is the name that makes us live and breathe. Amen. So although we're the church of Philadelphia who has a church with little strength, but he opened the door that no one will be able to shut. Apparently, wow, many are maybe looking upon us. Maybe publishing houses, Christian ones are looking at us. Who are you? What are you doing? In the midst of the pandemic, all of us are stopping. All the printing of the literature are stopping, but they're distributing more than 2 million books a day. I mean, a year. Saints, Satan can try to do this and do that. 
but we don't fear this, saints, because we know that the Lord opened, opened a door among us and no one, no one can close it. Amen. For who speaks this is he who has the key of David, he who has the key of the kingdom, the small flock. It was please God to give, give him the kingdom. And here we have the key of the kingdom. So he opened the door. He he has the door open for us. So the church of Philadelphia is of little strength. Here in verse 10 it says, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Meaning that for the church of Philadelphia, God promises to free it from the great tribulation because it is a church that is formed by overcomers. That's why we need to change our status, our status to a state of vigilance, of soberness, that is cooperate with the Lord. Although I am weak, I don't know how to do many things, but it doesn't matter. I want to give the little that I have, the five breads and two fish, and God will multiply it and do many things. So let's go to verse 11. Behold, I am coming quickly. The church of Philadelphia, he says, I come quickly. The time is closed, is near. I come quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. So you have the crown. The church of Philadelphia has a crown because of the status of vigilant state in which it's found. So thank the Lord for the miracle of the dawn that made many of us change our status. We're in the status of overcomers. And now we have the crown and let us keep it, conserve it. That's why I've been sharing these past few messages saying, let us not go back. Let us not go back. Let us conserve what we have, conserve it for the sake of the Lord's coming. Lord Jesus. already commented Psalms 110. And last Sunday, a young brother here came to me and he gave me a fabulous verse. You know, the Song of Songs, chapter 6, verse 10. This book of songs, we studied it and understood it doctrinarily in the past. And now the moment of the dawn is when reality came. Who is he? So this is Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 10. So I'm going to read it with the King James Version. Who is this who looks forth as a light in the morning? Who is this who shines up, who appears fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners? Saints, it's wonderful. This is a church. This is the church of Zion. This is the church of Philadelphia. This is the church of the small flock. There's the church of the workers of the last hour. There's the church that surged mainly in this re as this reality in the moment of dawn. So we're having this reality. You know why? Because we, the overcomers, kept and we keep the status of vigilance. We will be overcomers. And our usefulness here as a church is to preach the gospel. Let's preach the gospel but it's a complete gospel introducing people in the church life. These people need to be nourished and we preach to everyone. Our literature is for everyone. The, the promoting through the Institute Life for All is for everyone. But those who the Lord entrusted us, those who come, we are responsible for them. We need to take care of them. You understand? I don't need to carry 
and my as a burden to nourish everyone but i have the obligation to speak to everyone i have the obligation to preach this gospel to everyone but those who the lord calls to the church who are to be nourished we must take care of and that's where god will charge us right so doing our part here on earth it is because our objective also is not just for us but let us work to be part of the 144,000 who will be raptured alive let us be these who who we take care of who the lord entrusted us to be part of the 144,000 that is our objective you know that's our objective so our labor also doesn't end here but when the lord comes it's when the dawn already i'm already inferring that as the nautical dawn the lord's secret coming the rapture the overcomers will be raptured and we will meet the man child will go to the throne of god in the third heaven and we will in revelation 19 it says that we will come in the Lord's parousia for three and a half years of the great tribulation. We will not be in the great tribulation. We'll be with Christ. And in the end, Christ will appear and his public coming to the judgment, judgment seat. He will show up in the last and the end of the three and a half years, just that in heaven. But just that in heaven, there will be the feast, the, the, the marriage of the groom and the lamb. They will marry. Sorry, sorry. The moon will wed with the sun. They will meet. The moon and the sun will meet and will be one. And as a one husband and wife and one, we will battle in the last battle of Armageddon to cast out Satan the false prophet, the Antichrist, and all these actions and and these armies who came against the people of God. And we will end once and for all with this rebell rebelliousness on earth. As someone who's in the heights and who's from above. So using our version, John Ferramada, it says, Who is she who looks forth? as the morning fair this looks forth means shakaf and it means that it's being looked upon from the heights man you want to participate that that will be us looking from top to bottom i want to look from top to bottom saying not from bottom up so who is she who looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners, formidable as well. So this is a church of overcomers that who not only overcame on earth, but who show up in the Zion, heavenly Zion, after the, the wedding of the Lamb, they unite to Christ and the moon to the sun to battle alongside the husband as an army with banners. So there's an environment today in the church to have this calling. Is there not an environment? God is calling and many are, are presenting themselves. Present themselves generously and voluntarily. And the young people who are to be apathetic and cold to the things of the Lord, they're being engaged more and more. So this is not a miracle that's happening. So I will say regarding the ministry of John. You do remember that Brother Dong helped us to show in John chapter 21. John 21. When the Lord... Told Peter. Because Peter was 
was jealous, became jealous. Because the Lord told Peter, Peter, when you're older, you will extend your hands and others will guide you, guide you where you do not want to go. And there Paul wasn't happy about it. But then looking at John, and John is always protected by the Lord. So Peter asked, how about him? What about him? There the Lord responded in verse 22. It said, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Meaning that, yes, the ministry of John followed the ministry of Paul. Paul was martyred probably in year 67. And God miraculously took John to Asia Minor, to Ephesus. And he continued to take care of the churches in Asia Minor. And John died with 100 plus years. Just that, the ministry of John, I want to leave this clear, did not end, right? The ministry of John did not end. Did not, did not end with his death. But, saints, the effect of John's ministry, he made adjustments. He brought forth. He brought more revelation and mainly the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, just that the effect of the ministry of John at the end of at, at that time, the end of the first, second, first century, starting the second century, then the church started to be in degradation. Even the church in Smyrna, with the church in Pergamus, Thyatira, went to the bottom of the well. And then Sardis is able to restore but there was a beginning of restoration and then it stopped. But finally, the Lord is consolidating the church Philadelphia in our days. That is truly wonderful. You know that during all this decline, there was no prophetic word leading the people of God forward as in the times of Moses. So thank the Lord that we're having the prophetic word. Amen. Or Jesus. So the ministry of John to me, I will tell you what I think. The ministry of John, because of this ministry that I read, verse that I read, if I want him to remain until he, I want. So the ministry of John is related to the Lord's coming. Do you agree with me or not? If I want him to return until... If I want him to remain until I return, what is that to you? So the Lord reserved, pre preserved ministries, John's ministry after Paul's ministry. So though there was a degradation in the church, and now finally, in the end of 21st century, there starts to be a consolidation of the Church of Philadelphia. Newly, the ministry of John starts to take effect, comes into effect. You perceive this. So it's close near to the Lord's return at dawn. So now the ministry of John is taken with full strength. That's why Revelation was the greatest book of revelation that the Lord gave. And the Lord gave it to John, showing exactly how things were to happen, especially in the end times. So the ministry of John is for the end times. Am I wrong here? It's what at least the Lord has showed me. So the ministry of Revelation, the book of Revelation is completely related to the revelation that John received regarding the end times. So, Re Revelation, Genesis, oh, Revelation 1 1. Oh, Lord Jesus, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him 
to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things. So it's restoring, restoring the situation, the normal situation that there was in the first century. Now the end times, this principle became ready for us. The whole book of Revelation is a book of Revelation. The revelation means revelation. Apocalypse means revelation. It means the unveiling, the discovery to reveal something. So this book of Revelation, God desires to show it to his servants. God, thank the Lord, he, he has many servants who serve him in the church, leadership in the church. And God needs this revelation through the prophetic word for the servants. But if God is unable to establish a principle, if he gives them he gives these this group of servants at once. There will be there will be confusion. Oh, I received it this way from the Lord. Oh, I received it this other way. Imagine the direction. What direction to take? So God did not do that, but God gave revelation to the servants. But for that, He sent an angel that notified one person only, and notified Paul. So Paul received that revelation, and he attested the word of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ, relating to everything that he saw, he witnessed. So starting that moment, I can affirm to you that the great recovery of this beginning is the re recovery of the prophetic word, Second Peter chapter 1. Oh, Lord Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1. Man, and so we have the prophet prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place, which is like the dawn, until the day dawns in the morning, star rises in your hearts, knowing first, this first, that now and no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Oh, I interpret it this way or that way. No, the prophetic word is different from the word of a teacher or of an interpret interpreter of the word. I can interpret it this way. You can interpret it that way. You, I, you think it's like that. I think it's like this. But the prophetic word needs to come from God. Okay. For knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men who God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the prophetic word has the Spirit as support who speaks on behalf of God. The prophet needs to speak on behalf of God, being moved by the Holy Spirit. And that's when the prophetic word takes place. And there's an interesting word here in, in verse 19. It says... They were confirmed, and the and so we have the prophetic word confirmed. So the prophetic word needs to be confirmed. If it's not confirmed, it doesn't come from God. Amen. Right? In these four or five years since the brother Dong's departure, who the Lord used, he suffered persecution and sufferings and 
even immaturity of co-workers and but he established a wonderful base and in these four or five years god has been able to move forward quickly and each revelation that the lord has given these past four years there has been confirmation am i exaggerating every word that has been spoken here the lord has confirmed it either with miracles or things happening or even even personal matters so when we went to israel we stepped on the the ground and the airport of tel aviv at that moment was when the emissaries of public relations american were that day as well to discuss and decide to change the embassy the u.s embassy from tel aviv to jerusalem to recognize them recognize Jer jerusalem as the capital of israel so saints we felt like ambassadors of heaven saints and we started speaking regarding the agreements from so many agreements were made from the arabic countries so it seems like a prophetic word it unveils things you see that prophetic word without knowing the church is the dynamic co-porting uh godspeed young people the situation of the health of the churches the engagement of the saints the young people are getting ready all of this isn't not a confirmation of the prophetic word oh lord jesus amen that's why in john 5 jesus the jews wanted jesus wanted to save the jews to bring the gospel of god to the jews and the jews were unable to understand it jesus would say that he was the one sent by god and then they would ask oh but what proof do you have that you were sent by god send show us a sign and the lord the lord knows that they had a dark heart it would it wouldn't it was a, he wouldn't it was worth nothing prove anything verse 36 but i have a greater witness than john's because john couldn't say that he was sent from god the other one had to say that he was sent from god so the, the jews thought it was john the baptist and then say, and then he, jesus would say no i have a greater testimony than john for the works which the Father has given me to finish, meaning that I was sent by God to the, the so that person does the work that he was sent to do. So when the person does, the sent one does, it is God who sent him who does. So that is the greater confirmation that it was Jesus who was sent by God because he does works that man is unable to do, and it is God himself who does. Is that is that not a confirmation? Amen, 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 amen. Thank the Lord. Romans 16. Oh, Senor Jesus, Lord Jesus, verse 25. Amen. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifested and by the prophetic scriptures made known. So the prophetic scriptures are the registries of the prophetic word made known to all nations. So the prophetic word is a commandment of the everlasting God. Is as the is a God saying, "Oh, raise camp, stop, let's camp." So that is the Lord's commandment. So the prophetic word is God's order to His people, made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to faith. To faith. So God spoke. We need to obey. When we obey, saints, the prophetic word. God himself does his work through his spirit. 
To God alone wise be glory through Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Let's go to Numbers. Numbers 12. Amen. When God chose Moses to be his prophet, his speaker, their man is complicated. Why, why only him? So his own siblings, Miriam and Aaron said, does God not only speak through us, just through you? So Numbers 12, verses 2. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? So there's always a concept of man, of competition, wanting to be the speaker of God. But it's it's God, it's, it's the Holy Spirit who chooses. But everyone wants to be, everyone wants to be, everyone wants to call attention to themselves. So it's not like this. The prophetic word does not come this way. It comes from the channel who God chose, the Spirit approved, and it will be so. Verse 6. Then he said, hear my words. God said, hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak. Speak to him in a dream. So the prophets in the time of Israel, God will th show through vision, through dreams at that time. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. When then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against him and he departed. So he <clears throat> he chose Moses to be a speaker, his prophet, to share and to know his secrets. So today is the same thing. The Jews want to know who sp to Jesus, who said that you're the son of God. It's the same prophetic word that needs to be fulfilled, needs to be accomplished. Deuteronomy 18. Amen, Lord Jesus. Verse 18 says, I will rise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. This prophet who God is referring to is Jesus. 19. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words which he speaks in my name I will require it of him. So if I if I speak a prophetic word and you don't listen, then God will take you on. But if the prophet, but if the word that he speaks is not from God, verse 22, when the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if if the, if the thing does not happen to come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Meaning that if the word of someone who calls himself a prophet does not is not confirmed, then God did not say it. So if God didn't say it, we do not have to fear him. So the prophetic word needs to be confirmed. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Man, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Man of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles and wonders. And signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, through the midst of Jesus. Him being, meaning that Jesus Nazarene, 
he was a man attested by God, sent by God to speak in the name of God. And God was giving him that support. Miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did. So God was confirming he is the, the one that was sent. So through Jesus, he realizes, accomplishes his work. So all prophetic word needs to be confirmed. Mark 16, let's go there quickly. Amen. After Jesus resurrected, uh, the 11 were there. Judas had Jude had already died. And Jesus told the 11 in verse 15. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that is our mission, the mission of the church, to preach, go to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So verse 19, it says, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he said, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached. So they obeyed the word. So they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. So the prophetic word, saints, needs to be confirmed. Amen. Lord Jesus. That's why let's go to Revelation. I won't be able to finish today. I prepared a second figure, but I don't have time to present it today. But I'll I'll just I'll just share here in the beginning of Revelation and then and then I'll finish. Who God gave to his servants the things which are to happen. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Verse 3 of Revelation 1. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. Meaning that if this prophecy comes from God, if John was the prophet, Speaking the prophetic word to us, if we read, it says, God says to read. Blessed is he who reads. That's for the coal porters labor with literature. It's important to read. And those who hear the words of this prophecy. So let us value the prophetic word, saints. Let us give it value. Let us ruminate it. Let us meditate it. Not only that, and keep those things which are written in it. So read, listen, and keep. Read, listen, and keep. For the time is near. Saints, mainly, especially in this moment of the dawn, the Lord needs the church of Philadelphia to be attentive small flock to be completely singed we need to be attentive to what will happen sorry not to be girded not singed be girded amen john to seven charges return grace to you and peace from him i don't have a lot of time i wanted to hear the testimonies of some young people from Godspeed Young People event yesterday, but I don't know if you're able to perceive what I'm sharing. On the one hand, we're in a special moment. We have the privilege to experience this moment. During 2,000 years of the history of the church, we are the only ones who are having this opportunity, this honor to experience what the Lord is doing I just wanted to finish with this, okay? And immediately, 
in the book of Revelation talks about the seven spirits of God. The seven spirits of God of the age are in the age of the end times. It's in the age of the use, effectively use, the strongest point of John's ministry in the end times. The spirit became seven. So you can say, so there's seven. So in my head, I'm 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 a, I'm I'm a math I'm a math guy. So when 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 you say it's one spirit now it's seven, so it's seven times more, right? You multiply by seven. So whenever the Lord acted out once, He acted out seven times. But saints, number seven in the Bible means it is a complete number. It's a number of completeness. It's a whole number. It's a complete number. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here. When seven regards, it's regarding the execution of God's economy on earth, the execution of the spirit of, 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 of the work of the spirit, the will of God, number seven is a whole number, is a whole number. Meaning that seven spirits mean, doesn't mean seven times stronger. It can be many times more. So what does seven means? Since seven is a whole number, and truly it is the spirit acting in its fullness. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The spirit acting with complete strength. Wow. We're in the time of the spirit seeing these miracles happen. You know why? Because the spirit is acting with its complete total strength. The young people today, wow, Lord Jesus, are presenting themselves. The brothers in the churches are moving, migrating. They're taking on God's calling. And people are seeking us and seeking the prophetic word through the answer to life for all. They want to live the church life. All of this, this is what? This is the spirit working. Amen. With complete total strength. Oh, Lord Jesus. And its fullness. Let us cooperate with the Spirit. May the Lord bless you. Wow. I'm just going to pray to, to for those who are at home. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, for having us, for placing us in this unique moment, witnessing what you're doing, what the Spirit is doing in this moment of dawn. Lord, we can only say that our heart for us to consecrate ourselves even more, give ourselves more to you. Lord, use us for this special moment so the church may fulfill its, its duty on earth to preach the gospel, bringing many people to your kingdom, living the church life, to be overcomers as well. Lord, we also ask that we may be that church who are overcomers in heaven. Lord, we may we still want to fulfill our, our, do our part to be part of your army in this last battle of Armageddon. Lord, keep all those who are listening to this word. Give us understanding, spiritual understanding to cooperate, to understand what, you're, what the spirit wants to do. Lord, give us a spirit that is inflamed that is flaming, is burning with this fire who is burning, as burning and that ignites other people when we speak to them. That's why, Lord, the church, the sec seven torches of spirit, burn, burn all impurities in our lives. Burn impurities in the church, Lord. Burn any impurities wherever we step on, Lord. May everything be holy, for the earth is holy wherever there is a fire in this bush. Lord, thank you, and we bless each family, every brother, every child, every young person. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs>